right, good evening everyone and welcome to the induction ceremony of Phi Theta Kappa, the Beta Chi Sigma chapter here at Fayetteville campus. Phi Theta Chapter's mission is to recognize and encourage academic achievement of two-year students as well as provide opportunities for individual growth and development through participation in an honors, leadership, and service, and fellowship. Here with us today, we have our wonderful faculty, Dean Thomas, Dean Kowoja, our speaker, Phoebe Handy, and our advisor, as well as professor of English, Dr. Kristen Gerard. Last but not least, we have Regional GMC Atlanta Metropolitan Director Brock. And if you guys would welcome our next inductee, Vice President. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm introducing Dr. Rock. I'm so sorry. <laughs> welcome, Dr. Rock. <laughs> Good evening, everybody. You doing okay? Well, it's Director Rock, not Dr. Rock, but I'm going to strive to get that PhD someday. That, that's okay. That's all right. That's why we have these ceremonies. It's all, it's all part of the growth opportunity here. Uh, I'm General Rock Donahue, the Executive Director of what's now called the Atlanta Metropolitan Region for George Military College. And right now, that region is comprised of the Fayetteville Campus, the Fairburn Campus, and our Stone Mountain and Zebulon Extension Centers. So I am absolutely honored and pleased to be with you here this evening. Again, welcome to all of you to the induction ceremony for the Beta Chi Sigma chapter uh, of the Phi Theta Kappa International Honor Society here at George Military College and the Fayetteville campus. And I really want to thank uh, all who are leading this organization, advising this organization, who had a hand in for putting this induction ceremony together. Uh, our academic dean here at the Fayetteville campus, who also oversees the Stone Mountain Extension Center, uh, Dr. Promotion. Our assistant director and dean of students here at the Fayetteville campus, also overseeing the Zebulon Extension Center, Laura Thomas. And of course, Dr. Christian Gerard, a long serving full time faculty member here, one of the original team members to help launch uh, this Fayetteville campus when we opened our doors in August of 2015. And so to Dr. Gerard, Dr. Bamoja, Dean Thomas, and, and everyone who had a hand in putting this ceremony together today. Thank you. Thank you very much. And to uh, Beth Ann Miles, thank you, ma'am, for coming back. Uh, I'm a, I'm an alum of the GMC Fayetteville campus. Uh, great to have you here tonight. When President Colwell took over the presidency of Georgia Military College in 2013, he's the 21st president. Georgia Military College. He's a retired three-star general. And he set a vision. He set a vision for Georgia Military College called Vision 2029. Now that sounds like a weird number, but when you think about the fact that Georgia Military College was founded in 1879, for all the UPTK math majors, do that math. Right. Vision 2029 would be how many years? 150. Right. I know you were calculating. I can see it. <laughs> so the president took over GMC, made an assessment and said, this is what I want Georgia Military College to be recognized for nationally in 2029. Realizing he probably wouldn't be in the presidency to see it, but he set that vision. That's what leaders do. And in that vision, he said, I want Georgia Military College to be known nationally for three things. Three things. Providing character-based higher education, improving students' personal well-being, and my very very favorite part of the vision, part three was to give them hope for a brighter future. That's it. That is Vision 2029. And if you enter the doors of the Fayetteville campus, the front doors, if you stop and look up on the right, there's a big placard up on the wall, and that vision statement is there. Underneath the vision statement is the mission statement for Georgia Military College. Our mission statement is to produce educated citizens and contributing members of society in an environment that develops the intellect and character of its students, regardless of location or method of delivery. How's that? You think I've said that a few times? Right, seven years of practice. Right. 
produce educated citizens and contributing members of society in an environment that develops what? The intellect and character of our students. You see the connection? Character-based education. So, Vision 2029, the mission of Georgia Military College, we have a purpose statement here in the region, which is pretty much to accomplish that mission and that vision through academic centers of excellence, serving the community and equipping our college and career-ready students for success in a competitive global society, ensure that they can start here, go anywhere. That's our motto. Start here and go anywhere. All of that together sets the backdrop for this wonderful occasion. Highly qualified, successful students who each and every day, whether they knew it or not, were pursuing that mission right here in an academic center of excellence, en route to a vision, being equipped for success. And tonight we're going to recognize eight of them. I think about five are here. We're going to recognize all eight. We've also got some incoming leaders of this chapter who are going to be part of this ceremony. And of course, I have the pleasure to to already meet our guest speaker, Fifi Han. And so I am real excited uh, to hear her remarks. But again, welcome to all of you. Thank you for being here. And thank you for helping us get back to some state of whatever the new normal is going to be. I'm double vaccinated. We got ionization units. We're all good. Okay? But it is great. And again, my thanks to Dr. Gerard for spearheading this because we are really trying hard to get back to some state of in-person gathering after about a year and a half. I don't know about you, but I'm feeling I'm feeling great just standing here looking at y'all instead of through a television screen. Okay, which we're still doing some of that. So thank you to all the parents. Thank you to all the staff and faculty and friends who have come out here tonight to be a part of this wonderful celebration. Now it's my distinct privilege to introduce our incoming chapter secretary, Tamara Young, who's going to introduce our guest speaker tonight. Good evening, everyone. So, Ms. Fifi Hanley is the founder and executive director of the Atlanta-based literacy organization, Page Turners, Make Great Listeners. Its mission is to expand students' knowledge and understanding of the world themselves and their unique personality and the Since 2018, Page Turners was partnered with corporations such as CBS 46, PNC Bank, Mercedes Benz USA, Southern Company, UPS, Coca Cola Company, Chick fil A Foundation, Cricket Wireless, and others. The, or the organization has hosted over 30 award winning and New York Times best selling authors, including Angie Thomas. Jason Reynolds, an award-winning actress, actress, activist, mother, and author, Gabrielle Union. Ms. Hamley is an accomplished professional who has made numerous appearances on CBS 46 and supported their Books to Children campaign and has spoken on panels of various nonprofit agencies, including the Junior Legacy of Atlanta and Communities and Schools. She has been featured in numerous articles in the Atlanta Journal Constitution, City Lifestyle, Buckhead Magazine, Northside Neighborhood Neighbor, Peace Street Papers, and was the cover lady of Fayette Women Magazine. She was recently nominated as Atlanta's 2020 Hometown Hero by the Air Force Thund Thunderbirds, where she took a flight beyond the clouds in the F-16 fighter jet. She serves on the board of the AGC Director Book Facility, I'm sorry, Book Festival, a member of the Georgia Department of Education, English, Language Arts, Literacy Council, and the Literacy Partner of Get Georgia Reading. Give round of applause for Ms. Fifi Hand. Makes you feel any better? I'm nervous too. <laughs> you know, you speak all the time, though, Sam. 
that's okay. That's, that's fine. I, t I speak in front of people all the time as well, and I still get nervous. You need that little anxiety, give you the little edge. I'm going to take my mask off, of, if I may. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. Good evening. Thank you so much for having me. Tell you a little story. I'm going to make it very personal, okay? At least the first part of it. So as a kid, I lived in my head. I grew up as an only child raised by my great-grandmother in a small town in Mississippi. Yes, from Mississippi. In addition to that, I had severe asthma. So that meant if it rained, I had an asthma attack. When the seasons changed, I had an asthma attack. If I laughed too hard, I had an asthma attack. If I got scared, what happened? An asthma attack. I, yep, I had an asthma attack. To add insult to injury, I had side effects from the medications because technology is not then, was not what it is now. So I had side effects from the medication they would administer to relieve the asthma attacks. One of the sy symptoms, as ugly as it sounds, blisters between my toes. So I had to wear socks with sandals. Unfortunately, my friends didn't get the trend-setting fashion statement. So as a result of that, I got teased. And I shall never forget the warm, sunny days where the class would go outside to play on the playground while I spent my recess time sitting beside the teacher in tears angry that the sun was shining, right? <laughs> Pretty sad story. But I won't mention the stories about growing up with the name Fifi. We'll save, we'll save that for another time. We don't have enough time for that. Need, needless to say, I did not spend a lot of time going outside, outside to play. So books were my truest friends. Who knew that an integral part of the work that I would one day do would involve providing and sharing stories. Essentially, it is my job to help children find their story and telling stories. Oddly enough, I wish someone had asked me, or better yet, challenged me to find my story. Today, I'd like to ask you, or better yet, challenge you to find your story. I have a question. Are we foolish enough to think that all stories are written on paper, bound in a book with a spine, with a cover, with a short synopsis on the back, with a summary, to grab the attention of an interested passerby who thinks there's something of substance and value within its pages? Of course not. You have a story but yours has not been completely written yet. In my humble opinion, the most amazing stories are lived, a true and accurate account of a person's life. The makings of a great story are all around you. We carry chapters and verses everywhere we go, every day. Have you ever heard or read a story that influenced your life? What is it about the power of a story that resonates with the reader or the hearer in such a way to say, I see you, I hear you, I value you, your voice, and your humanness? See, it is a story, in fact, that connects us regardless of color, ethnicity, socioeconomic status, religion, or background. When we begin to share, we open up pathways for understanding compassion, empathy, kindness, and community. History is still telling your story through your academic and life experiences. And like any great story, there will be conflicts, there will be mistakes, missteps, but there will be triumphs, humor, and historical moments where you will find yourself teetering on the cusp of a new discovery or even technology or maybe impacting social change. Every story worth its salt must have a series of events to drive the action, right? What's a story without action? Look at you, 
Look at you. You are here for a reason. You have been cordially invited to participate in an elite group reserved for members who are civic-minded leaders of good moral character and have demonstrated academic excellence. There is no one like you, or you, or you, or you, or you. You're an original, not a copy. So be sure, as you endeavor to continue your education, explore, test, ask questions, and use your voice. Every story has a theme and a purpose. The purpose of your story will come when something moves you. That thing that stirs your spirit, evokes emotion, thought, and then action. Oftentimes, lingering behind purpose will be passion. Passion is that thing that pricks your heart. It makes you want to get up every morning and prepare to tackle whatever comes within your path. It ignites your spirit and fuels you to keep running and working past the point of exhaustion. And it keeps you up at night. And it bothers you when you hear it. And it bothers you when you see it. But it propels you into the most exhilarating, crazy journey you've ever been on. What's a story without adventure, right? Your story is still being written. But one day, it will be, it will be complete. It will connect you with people, places, and experiences you never thought you would encounter. It will lead you toward conversations where it is impossible to think that you have anything in common with that person until you begin to share and realize you have more similarities than differences. See, we can let life simply happen or we can choose to shape and tell a very particular and personal story. Who are the characters who populate your world? Your professors? Your parents? Your friends? What have they taught you? Who are you? And how do you choose to live in this world? How do you shape, revise, and share the unique story of you? Only you can answer those questions. Your name will be mentioned in rooms you haven't stepped in yet. But when the opportunity presents itself and offers an open door where you're invited, and it will, make sure everyone knows you're in the room. Make sure you are prepared to lean in closely to the conversation. Listen carefully, actively, and when it is time, make sure you have something to say. There's a quote that I love by Tim Burton that says, every story has a beginning, a middle, and an end, not necessarily in that order. Ladies and gentlemen, depending on your point of view, you are at the beginning, middle, or end of an exciting chapter. Choose to believe that the world and your place in it is much larger than your backyard, your neighborhood, or your community. And once, I promise, once you come to that realization, you will not only empower others to share their story, but you'll be crazy enough to believe that you can change the world. Thank you. executive director and fellow Phi Data Capital, me Capital members, see we're all nervous. <laughs> I am pleased to present to you these candidates for membership in our honor society. These students have fulfilled all requirements for membership and have been selected because they have chosen scholarship, leadership, service, and fellowship as their hallmarks. I recommend them for acceptance to the Beta Chi Sigma chapter of Phi Theta Kappa Honor Society. 
you are about to be inducted into a scholarly fellowship which embraces community colleges, not just here in Georgia, but the nation and the world. This fellowship is Phi Theta Kappa, and your chapter is Beta Chi Sigma. After induction, you will find among members an atmosphere of scholarship to which you must give yourself in order that the organization may be meaningful to you. I don't know who said this, and I can't even find their name, but the small steps in the right direction can turn into the biggest steps of your life. I have here a torch. Symbolic of knowledge, which is the servant of wisdom, which dwells with prudence and leads in the way of righteousness in the midst of passive judgment. I have a white rose representing the purity and beauty of life, with the white bud signifying the intellectual associate. If you'll turn your attention, here is the emblem of Phi Theta Kappa. It consists of a golden tab, top and bottom, and in this golden field, like this portion of our coat of arms, refers to the golden opportunities abound to the society, both to evidence of culture and performance of good works. Since gold is a notable metal, it shall have further significance to our society, as it shall represent the nobility and obtain those who achieve intellectual leadership. Across this lab, you will notice a black band. It represents the three ideals that bind us together in the cultural self-control, which is necessary for foundation, true wisdom, aspiration, and purity. Shining through the black enamel background are three Greek letters, which are the initials of the Greek meaning, wisdom, aspiration, and purity. Behind the band is a wreath. Oak leaves, as well as laurel on the other side. The oak stands for the stability and strength of character, as symbolized through a mighty oak. The graceful curling leaves of the laurel signify achievement and success, and all attributes of membership in our society. Above the man is a representation of the, of the head of Athena, which is a symbol of learning. In the base will appear the Greek letters, which mean light, light of knowledge, and learning. The common idea of members of Phi Theta Kappa Honor Society. This badge stands as a symbol of high idealism as our organization and members in the select group. Now that we have studied the constitution of our organization, the purpose of which we foster a spirit of devotion to study and to the scholarly ideals among its members and those principles that embody the Greek letters, which stand for, and this is a mouthful, famos, famos, pathros, said it three times over. That means wisdom, aspiration, and purity. Now that the standards and ideals of this organization have been fully revealed to you, you will come complete and pledge as we admit you into a complete fellowship. Okay, so you guys, repeat after me. I, Solomon Square, I, Solomon Square, on the 19th day of May, to uphold the standards of Phi Theta Kappa, to uphold the standards of Phi Theta Kappa, and to keep this object and aim in mind, and to keep this object and aim in mind, and I do solemnly pledge allegiance, and I do solemnly pledge allegiance to my fellow members and promise to my fellow members and promise to aid them in all worthy endeavors. To aid them in all worthy endeavors. It is my pleasure to welcome you into the Phi Theta Kappa Honor Society and the lively fellowship of scholars it affords. I salute you for your accomplishment. I charge you to explore always for truth and to dedicate yourselves to the cultivation of a well-reasoned life, a prelude to service and honor. As a boy named 
come up to the table and receive your rose and candle. Don Cowan Heaven, take me. No worries. Thomas Miles. Asia Smith. Claudia, Claudia, Lucas, Lucas. Alyssa Cropper and Valencio Jackson. Right. 
Good afternoon. Or good evening, I should say. How's everyone doing? Good evening. Good evening. All right. Good to see everyone. All right, uh, again, my name is uh, Dean uh, Josiah Pomosa, and uh, I am also a co-advisor for uh, Phi Beta Kappa Hi, a Beta Tide Sigma chapter. And before we close out, uh, I would be remiss uh, not to recognize some of the hard work and achievements of our chapter uh, between last year, in terms of that organizational period or year, and moving into this year, right? And so uh, with that, uh, typically, with every region of the Phi Beta Kappa organization, uh, it's organized by state, uh, and so therefore we represent or are part of the Georgia region of Phi Beta Kappa. And two times a year, we are normally convened as a organization within the region of Georgia, and you have a very interesting uh, variety of members from different institutions across the state. And normally it's that spring conference, right, that all the chapters and their hard work and achievement is recognized. So last year, obviously, for uh, you know, reasons that we all are aware of, we were unable to recognize our Beta Chi uh, Sigma chapter's uh, achievement. So we actually have uh, two officers, or former officers, and student alumni here, that were uh, largely a part of some of the hard work and achievement that I'm going to share with you all. So a couple of different uh, certificates that we did receive uh, last year that I wanted to just recognize for a moment here is uh, first off, uh, our chapter was recognized as one of the best, newest chapters in the Georgia region. All right, hold your applause, we've got a couple here. All right, hold it, we'll get to the end here. Uh, also, our Beta Chi Sigma chapter was recognized as the distinguished uh, college project uh, first runner up. And this is basically a uh, community service-based project that the chapter members engage in uh, where they find some way, shape, or form of after meeting with our campus leadership to uh, help this campus uh, in some area or need, right? Also, it racked up last year. Uh, as far as our PTK research project, it's called the Honors in Action Project. Uh, our particular chapter came in, again, with honorable mention as far as the topic that they researched and put their time into last year. And also with the theme that they chose, and again, it's a research project, so they have a variety of different themes that they can choose from to delve into and uh, engage in more deep research and uh, scholarship. And so the theme that our particular chapter chose we again were recognized as a first runner up for that particular competitive area. And then, last, in terms of the chapter, so our Beta Chi Sigma chapter was also recognized as one of the top 10 chapters in the Georgia region last year in terms of 2020. And then, last but not least, this is more of an alumni status, but for a distinguished chapter officer in terms of an honorable mention. We have a, a former uh, chapter president of ours who's over here running our technology. So I will present this to him, Karsten Frisky. Thank you. All right, now I have one last special award here that again would have come, now this was for this year, and it's part of a scholarship competition that PTK conducts every year uh, with the support of the Coca-Cola Corporation. And it usually comes with a variety of different competitive uh, scholarships that students can uh, apply for. Uh, there's a gold level, a silver le level, and a bronze level. And each particular level comes with a monetary reward uh, in terms of scholarship, right? And so uh, with that, even being nominated for the Coca-Cola, what's called the All-State Academic Team uh, Scholarship Competition is an honor in of itself. Uh, I recall uh, when we, before the pandemic, we, we usually have a uh, luncheon downtown Atlanta in one of the state capitol buildings. Top floor, wonderful view of the uh, city. Uh, and I remember one of the uh, presidents, I believe it was Georgia Highlands College, you know, he said that if you, as a college student, are selected for the all-state academic team. That essentially, to me, means that you're one of the best minds in the state of Georgia. All right. 
So uh, we're fortunate that we have a member here that was nominated for the All-State Academic Team, and I wanted to recognize her, and that is our uh, incoming officer here, uh, Mr. Mary Young. Come on up. try to recreate what the luncheon experience would have been like. So we do have a medallion that also comes along with this particular recognition. So let's go ahead. You gotta turn this way now. <laughs> and uh, our new board members. Listen, I don't want to end this evening without thanking Edward Hernandez for his leadership as the outgoing president. And finally, Ms. Fifi, thank you very much for your inspiring story and your message. I hope you were paying attention because here's what I took away. I'm always looking for new ideas and I love motivational speakers. So here's what I took away, man. Always be proud of where you came from. Stand firm in your beliefs. Be proud of who you are, know where you're going. Create your story and change the world. And as you were speaking, man, I looked up and I saw that PTK poster. Look what that says. I am ready to change my world. She didn't even use that poster as part of her remark. Now look at that. <laughs> what a connection. That's what this is all about. And I'll finish where I started with the President's vision. What was that last part? Giving students hope for a brighter future. Thank you all for coming here tonight. Congratulations to all of you. Thanks again to the leadership for putting this together. I think there's some refreshments in the back. Are we okay? All candles are out, no fire hazards. We good? <laughs> Don, thank you very much for leading all that. I saw you up there tonight. <laughs> thank you, Karsten, for running our technology. Isn't this kid wonderful? Our distinguished graduating student last year. We loved him so much we kept him on the staff and he's still working. Great job. Thank you, everybody. Be safe tonight. Enjoy our refreshments. Have a wonderful evening. Thanks for coming. Good job, everybody. Good job. Congratulations. Um, <laughs> 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 <